to go in their stores, see the product, and then buy that product and bring it to them and show them what you can do better for them. Um, I don't really give any, you know, discount attempts. Yeah, I might come in low. You know, there's a strategy called low ball. You know, you might, you know, you know, work on tighter margins. You know, to get your foot in the door. Um, if you have a unique product that no one else has in the market, you know, if you come up with a great design and it's very hard for someone to manufacture that, uh, that can get you in the door. Um, that's my specialty. You know, it, it, it's the new business of trying to get the new customer. Um, and that's really where relationships take place. You know, you actually you really got to sell yourself. But after that, guys, I can't say. If you don't make your customer money, you're out. They can love me. They can love my salespeople, but you know what? If, if, if they're not making money, they're going to get fired. It's a tough day. It's a tough world out there. You can't sweep it underneath the rug. So, um, you know, it, it's just selling yourself, selling that you know what you're doing, you know, talking about, oh, I have a factory for 23 years, it's only been making shoes for us, stuff like that. Okay. Good question. Uh, my name is Travis. Do you oh, think that college yeah. should incorporate an actual program um, discussing relationship building? An actual program discussing relationship building? Incorporated into the uh, business department. Into what? Uh, the business department. Business department? Yeah. Should you? Yeah, do you think you should? Um, that, that business relationship department? Yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, not really. Because I think that business relationships are the same exact thing as personal relationships. You know, if you have good personal relationships, you're going to have good business relationships. It's just, you know, it's a relationship you're building here at Brockport and uh, with people, with different people. And, you know, if, if you're a guy, like I said, I, 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 I damn season, I said I've been married 23 years, so that's an accomplishment. You, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're a long-term relationship person, your business relationships, it's just part of your character. I don't think you can really teach it. You know, it's just who you are. Uh, like Dan said, you know, you know, you know, you know, it, 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 don't go, don't, don't try and, you know, just take too much from the customer in the beginning. Like I mentioned, you know, protect both parties that are, that are helping you, that kind of thing. But I think it's the same thing, you know, trust, honesty, um, uh, proactive, being in front of it, telling the customer in advance if there's a problem, transparency. All sounds like a marriage, right? It sounds, it's a relationship, right? It's the same thing. But, you know, it'd be interesting if you try.
I just was so fascinated with, you know, with the other side of the world, Asian culture. It's totally different. You know, the West is the West. Europe, it's kind of like over there. It's totally different. You know, it's so fascinating. You should try and get over there. You know, the world's getting smaller. So um, it was business with marketing. I think that's a specialty. Hi there, um, Billy Godofler. I'm wondering how she got started. How did you get started in the international business? Something that I'm really sorry. That was part of his question too. I didn't yeah. answer. Um, my father uh, was 55 years old, uh, and you're making shoes in the United States. I would prefer to make shoes in the United States. Unfortunately, the labor market can't handle it, and I, I personally feel our our economy should be nailing studs into a shoe. I don't think that's where our workers really should be. That's a whole separate conversation. So we had a fact he worked for a factory and then at 55 years old, when most people are going to retire, I was at Brockport, I was in like my senior year, and he said to me, I was going to go to Wall Street, and he said to me, you know, he said, boss, he said, uh, I'm thinking of going to China. I think that's a good market for the future for exporting. And he was a visionary. And he was 55. He had like $150,000 in life savings, could have retired. And he's like, you know, I think you, you and your brother John can sell for me. Would you like to try it? I, I really didn't get to know my dad too well as we were growing up because I was working. You know, I'm like, okay, I'll try it. So uh, away we went, you know, the three of us. I lost my father uh, uh, 12 years ago, and I actually lost my brother seven years ago. So uh, next time I come, we'll talk about perseverance. Okay, just keep going forward. Okay, and then, and then that's how we ended up in China. We started importing components out of China and then eventually going over there and, uh, and, and making finished product. So you already had a customer base before you went to China? You just that's went there? Was that? Uh, no, we really didn't. Very, 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 very I can tell you a little story, but I know we're running out of time. Very little. Um, we, we really didn't have a customer base, and you should. <laughs> Most people have like these great ideas that they start a business and they don't know where they're going to get the top line from because they always come to me. You know, people always come to me and talk to me about that. So, oh, I got a great idea. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm like, well, who's going to be a customer? I don't know. I'll find one. You know, get the customer first. You got to at least have a customer in mind. Um, we had my father had a couple of relationships in, in his past, but they all they all fizzled out in about 30 days, and we had to start from scratch back on doors. But I was in an emerging market, you know what I mean? It was emerging, it was the place to go. I was, I was lucky. We have time for two more questions. One over here, and then this gentleman here, I think. Please. Um, hi, my name is John Rizzo. And you were talking about acquisition costs. I have a little different question. Um, how do you think that the upcoming fiscal cliff will crimp your business, if at all, since? The fiscal cliff? Yeah, since you are a small business, you hear about it all the time. Explain the fiscal cliff to me. The I don't know. The taxes that are the six hundred billion dollar increase at the end of the year on January first. Oh, okay, okay. The the the, like, yeah. the taxes that are going to be imposed yeah, automatically. Yeah, how that the ones that will be imposed automatically. Yeah. Um, will it really? Because a lot of people say it will, but you would know more than the news. I guess. <laughs> I think most of them are going to be military cuts, right? A lot of them. I think twenty five percent are coming out of the coming out of the military. Um, the only thing that could hurt us is if they raise the tariffs, the duties on the acquisition costs. It's funny, the, 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 the duty system is very funny in the United States, you know? Like a plastic shoe, we pay 6% duty. So in other words, if the shoe's $10, we pay 60 cents to the government just to bring it in the country. But the uh, leather is 10%. So if the shoe's $10, we pay the government a dollar. If it's canvas, it's 37.5%. So if it's a cab issue, ten dollars, we give the government three dollars and seventy cents just to put it past U.S. customs. So uh, when the customs, uh, if that part of the uh, raising revenue uh, would go up, that would hurt us a lot. But I don't think it's going to hurt small business. I don't, I don't see it. Do you do you see it hurting small business at all? And in what way? Uh, I was thinking more of the uh, hiring and growth type type of way, not so much maybe uh, tariffs. Yeah. Um, you know, during the recession, a lot of uh, 
a lot of companies uh, cut a lot of jobs, and they just have one person doing the job at two. And also, you know, the computers and the technology, you know, which is our friend, but it also takes a lot of jobs as well. So I don't know if you've noticed, but you know, you know, corporate earnings are up, mm -hmm. even though unemployment's at eight percent. The stock market's cooking because these companies have learned to live without those employees due to the recession. I think uh, we need to uh, have incentives to to hire new people uh, to to continue with that. Um, I, I hope it doesn't spin us into a further recession because we've been we've been struggling out there for four or five years now. It's been tough. Yeah, that that was my question. Thank you. <laughs> I'm still off a plane from China. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's. One last question. Please join me in thanking Paul for...